In this video, I'll discuss the devilishly difficult counterpoint in the opening chorus of Bach's BWV 40 cantata entitled Dazu ist erschienen der Sohn Gottes, a musical setting of a Bible verse, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, that reads, For this the Son of God has appeared, that he might destroy the work of the devil. This chorus features a short but spectacularly complicated choral fugue as its minute and a half long middle section based on material presented in this opening section. Bach composed this cantata for the second day of Christmas in the Lutheran liturgical calendar. I mentioned that I'd be discussing this chorus in my video last year about the BWV 79 opening chorus, since both involve complex fugues based on subjects with multiple repeated notes. These two choruses are similar in other aspects as well, since both feature horns in the score, and since Bach later recycled the music for both in his Lutheran masses. The BWV 40 chorus begins with this figure played by the horns and answered by the oboes and strings. A similar 16th note figure now enters, but accompanied by these repeated notes that I'll highlight orange. This is followed by a syncopated downward scale played by the horns, and one final combination of the purple and orange figures before the chorus enters. The chorus now enters, singing the first line of the text, combined with a repeat of the opening purple material. When the orange repeated note section returns, notice that the chorus now sings the second line of the text, about destroying the work of the devil, with this distinctive percussive new rhythm that enhances the declamatory fervor of this text. Notice that every time it appears in the chorus, one of the voices remains on the same note doubling the repeated notes of the orchestra, but with the new distinctive rhythm. This leads to the same yellow syncopated downward scale from before, and the opening A section now ends in the dominant key of C major. The spectacular fugal middle section now begins with this subject, set to the same first line of text from before. Notice that this subject is just a spliced variant of the version from the opening section we just heard. I'm highlighting the counter subject yellow since it's just a faster variant of the syncopated descending scale figure from before. Now listen just to this relatively straightforward fugal exposition. In other words, just the first four entries of this subject, the last three of which are paired with the yellow counter subject.
This fugue has none of the less stringent episodes commonly found in fugues, but instead is just a compact display of contrapuntal prowess from beginning to end, as we're about to see. Immediately following the exposition we just heard, the original subject, now doubled in the orchestra, is combined with a new countersubject set to the second line of text that begins with the orange percussive repeated note rhythm from the opening section and continues with this 16th note portion that resembles the material I highlighted purple in the opening section. Remember from dozens of my prior videos that the fugal term stretto is used when contrapuntal entries are squeezed together temporally so they overlap. In general, the closer the entries of a stretto, the more devilishly difficult it is to compose, since the overlapping portions that have to fit together musically are larger. This is why, for example, the incredible four-part close stretto at the end of the D major fugue from Book Two of The Well-Tempered Clavier is so impressive. With that in mind, the first stretto in this chorus is just this orange repeated note figure played by the second horn, Remember also what I said in this prior Bach cantata video, that repeated notes in a fugal or contrapuntal subject impart rhythmic distinctiveness without requiring harmonic movement, making it much easier to combine with itself or with other figures. So, while this first stretto might not have been very difficult to compose, buckle up for what's about to happen. The first subject now enters as a close two-part stretto with a simultaneous, more distant stretto of the orange and purple countersubject. On the next page, we have the same orange stretto in the horns, but now an even closer orange stretto between the bass and soprano voices. Now listen to this short portion and notice that the very first entry of the orange repeated note countersubject is the flat seventh scale degree of the underlying dominant seventh chord actually a secondary dominant 5-7 of 4 chord. More on this later. Before going on, let's revisit the discussion of Bach's musical religious symbolism from last year's video. Some authors have argued that this undulating purple 16th note figure is meant to be a visual representation of the devil in serpent form. Remember that the devil first appears in the biblical account as a snake in the Garden of Eden. This association may seem far-fetched until you listen to these two later movements from the same cantata. First, this bass aria about the hellish serpent who will have his head stomped on by Jesus. Basically just a more descriptive and amusing restatement of the Bible verse from the opening chorus. And notice the obviously serpentine configuration in the first violin part. The ensuing alto recitativo also talks about a serpent. Please leave a comment below if you can read German better than I can, and let us know if the original text has this same hilarious ambiguity. I think it's trying to say that once we are in paradise, the serpent no longer brings us danger, but as written in this English translation, it sounds like the serpent is the one in paradise, which would definitely be an interesting plot twist. This text, sung by the alto, has the same kind of slithering accompaniment, though now much more subdued since the serpent has been neutralized.
Knowing about these other movements makes it slightly more believable that Bach intentionally used this purple portion of the countersubject to represent the hellish serpent, especially when combined with the percussive orange repeated notes that could represent Jesus stomping on its head. Of course, if I had to play devil's advocate, I'd point out Bach's numerous other contrapuntal subjects that are equally serpentine, like this green one from the well-tempered clavier. Returning to where we left off, we've made it to the most mind-blowing portion of the fugue, when the subject enters as a close four-part stretto, while the oboes are simultaneously playing a stretto of the orange figure, and while the basso continuo is playing the purple serpent figure. Almost any other composer would have had a devil of a time composing something like this. Yet Bach churned out these incredibly complex pieces as if it were nothing to him. final portion of this fugue, though less complex than what we just heard, is my personal favorite moment of the composition. It consists of just three more entries of the subject, combined with the same orange and purple counter subject, but each entry modulates to a new key, each time with the orange repeated note on the flat seventh scale degree of the dominant seventh chord that tonicizes the new key. But notice that during the final most forceful entry, the percussive orange repeated note rhythm occurs on all four pitches of the dominant seventh chord, resulting in one final intense battle cry against the devil. The choral portion of the opening section now repeats to end the movement, but notice that the fugue ended in the subdominant key of B flat. So while this opening material originally had modulated from tonic to dominant, it now modulates from subdominant to tonic, a trick Mozart also used, as I've pointed out in prior videos, in the recapitulations of the finale of his K387 string quartet and in the first movement of his K545 Piano Sonata for Beginners. Now, to end this video, I'll play for you this entire devil of a chorus without interruption. <laughs> 